Well, hey, um, I love that song. Uh, it's talking about this idea of a firm foundation, and that's kind of what our series has been about the last couple weeks. I'm um, talking about the Sermon on the, the Mount, and, and where that phrase comes from is kind of building off of uh, everything Jesus has taught us. He concludes it all. You know, he's talking about this uh, person who builds, uh, a wise man who builds a sort of firm foundation is one who hears these things and does these things. And, and ultimately, like we started week one, and we talked about last week as well, is that ultimately all these things are impossible to do on our own. We need Jesus. We need someone that we can trust in. And, and that's what I love so much about that song is just a declaration saying, God, I will put my trust in you even when I don't know how or things are going to work out or difficult things are going on in my life. I can trust in you knowing that you will never leave me nor forsake me. And so I hope that uh, as you sing those songs, like don't just let it be a song. Don't just go through the motions. Like this is a moment where we get to let know, Jesus know how much we're thankful for him and how much we want to lift his name up um, because he is the one who can lift us up as we go through our everyday lives and our struggles. So um, I love that song. And, and kind of with that, um, we are talking about Firm Foundation, and this is the third week. And so I'm so glad and thankful you guys are here. Um, so uh, I want you to turn your neighbor real quick um, and tell your neighbor, don't judge me, bro. Okay, let's turn to your neighbor and say, don't judge me, bro. Or however you guys say it now, I'm pretty sure that's still how I say it. Um, so today we are talking about judging others, and something that I'm sure everyone has heard at some point or not, and if not, then this is awesome I get to share with you for the first time, uh, is this uh, golden rule that we're going to talk about. Does anyone, by show of hands, know what the golden rule is? Anybody feeling brave to say it out loud? No, oh man, come on. You, you're going to make her do it? Is this volunteering? All right, someone yell it real quick, real loud for me so everyone can hear. All right, I think I heard something about treating people. Yes, so uh, do unto others or treat others as you would have them treat you. Um, it's kind of this golden rule that um, even if you haven't grown up in church or you've probably seen this phrase put out there a lot, um, and so it's a standard, it's a way of treating people based on how we want them to treat us. And then obviously uh, there's this other part where it talks about not judging others, which um, is also a pretty well known. And both of these uh, passages, these moments take place in Matthew chapter chapter 7. So if you got your Bibles with you, go ahead and open up to Matthew uh, chapter 7, verses 1 through 12. There's kind of this um, progression that takes place that we'll go through. Um, but again, this is a, a, a famous passage, like everyone um, has probably heard about it at some point or another. It's been passed along, and um, whether you're in Christian circles or non-Christian circles, it's something that we all strive to want to live by. Um, but Unfortunately, and if we're being honest, we rarely live by. But it's a standard, it is a, a rule, uh, a golden rule that we should live by. And so what it says, though, to kind of share with you guys in one packet, um, in Matthew chapter 7, and again, this is Jesus sharing this whole sermon, and this is just one particular part of the sermon, uh, but he says this in J uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, judge not, there you go, judge not that you be not judged, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and with the measure you use it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample underfoot and turn to attack you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be open. Or which one of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? And then finally, he finishes the golden rule. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and 
the prophets. So we're going to stop right there. Uh, he kind of sums it up. This is, for this is the law and the prophets. Right there, that's a big statement. He mentions it a couple of different times when he's given this sermon. And what that refers to is the law is kind of considered, you know, the, the first five books in the Bible, you got the Torah. Um, and the prophets is kind of like sharing all the prophets and all the writings. So it's kind of describing like, in a nutshell, the Old Testament, living it out is this golden rule. And there's another other, a number of other places where he mentions this is, you know, fulfills the law and the prophets. Um, but this particular one, whenever you see that phrase that Jesus mentioned, it's like, all right, this is a big deal. We should pay attention to this. Now, when it comes to judging and it comes to the golden rule, I think every single one of us would probably agree that no one likes to feel judged, right? Um, anyone, by show of hands, like to feel judged by others? There's always got to be that one person, all right, who's not being honest. Um, No one wants to feel judged, right? It's not fun. Uh, I'm sure everyone can relate to that. Um, You know, we've all had some moment in our lives or some point or another where someone, you know, is maybe uh, saying some things about you, putting you down, maybe, you know, to a friend that you heard about later or maybe directly to you, uh, but kind of just, you know, talking poorly about you, kind of showing that, you know, maybe something you did wasn't good enough or who you are isn't good enough. Um, and it can hurt, right? When you feel judged, it can hurt. It can feel like someone is looking down on you, like you are less than them, uh, like you're not good enough. It also can bring about some anger, right? Maybe you feel judged unfairly. You know, maybe they're making assumptions about you that aren't true. And that can not only hurt, but also make you a little frustrated over how uh, they're treating you. No one likes to feel judged. You know, for me, uh, I've obviously, like everyone else, felt judged by people at different moments in my life. Um, I know for me, as as a leader, right, As, as a leader, as a pastor... Um, just naturally, and obviously scripture points to this, we're held to a standard, right? We're held to an account that, you know, if I'm going to preach some things, I should probably practice them as well, right? And so there's this expectation that people have of me, and obviously there's sometimes some unfair expectations, people judging unfairly, and I've experienced that as well. You know, I think for me, though, one of the things I began to realize, though, we've all struggled with judgment, But one of the things that I found is so subtle about feeling judged is that sometimes if we're not careful and we continue to just ruminate and what ruminate means is kind of think over and over negatively about something is that it can begin to take a hold and start molding you. For me, uh, to make an example, I had some friends who felt judged by church. Um, We were in college and they felt, you know, some of it were fairly, they felt uh, judged because of, you know, the church didn't, you know, like the way they dress or just didn't like, you know, the way they acted. And sometimes it was over some really petty stuff. And, And so they got hurt by that. They got hurt by the church and felt judged. So they left the church. But one of the things I began to notice in my friends that was just frustrating and disappointing is that they were so focused on that hurt that they ended up being some of the most judgmental people I've ever met, right? Because they would talk so negatively. That, that one person that judged them, that hurt them, had so much power over them, right? Because, you know, that person said these negative things about me and, and made these assumptions about me they're unfairly. And so they keep talking about it with all their friends. And sure enough, they talk to this friend about how bad that person is. And they talk to the next person. And before you know it, 20 people know about how they feel mistreated. And in the end of the day, what it creates is this culture, or this environment where the person that was the original judger now feels judged as well. Right? If we're not careful, we can become very judgmental as well. It's very easy to, you know, feel hurt by someone, so then to uh, repay evil for evil, right? If you're going to judge me, gossip about me, then I'll be mean and, and gossip about you too, right? If we're not careful, like, like Justin was talking about this, when we get angry, uh, like we talked about last week, sometimes we want to retaliate, we want to give some payback, an eye for an eye, but the problem is it creates this downward spiral, this cycle, where uh, it just gets worse and worse and worse, And so the question for us that I want to kind of ask for us is, um, no one wants to end up becoming the very thing that they despise, right? Uh, You feel judged. So like, I I generally don't want to be a judgmental person of others. But if I'm not careful and I continue to to dwell on that, I can become the very thing in which I don't want to be. So what do we do? What does that look like? How do we make sure that if we don't like feeling judged by others, how do we make sure that we don't become the judgmental person as well? Because we have a, a choice. Do we continue in that cycle of hurt or do we do something different? 
Do we try another route? Do we try to be proactive and rise above the dysfunction and the hurt to set the standard for others? Well, I think in this passage in Matthew uh, chapter 7, Jesus shares some really, really insightful things, right? Because it's so easy in our world and our culture where, you know what? It is eye for an eye. If you do me wrong, I'll do you wrong back. You say something mean, I'll say something mean back, right? That's kind of the cultural norm that we see in our culture. But Jesus is sharing a different way, right? And we talk about this idea of judgment, right? I think it's important for us to kind of define certain words because one of the things you learn in our language is that words change their meaning over time. A lot of people might uh, say a word that means one thing, but another person might think it means something different. And the word judge, as Jesus shared it, you know, 2,000 years ago, has changed a lot from what it means today, Right? As we talk about feeling judged now, we're usually kind of talking about this feeling of being condemned. We feel uh, judged. We feel like the other person is condemning us, kind of putting us down. Um, but what Jesus is talking about is like that, that is part of it, but it's also more. Judging can also just refer to a simple word of saying um, to uh, evaluate, to, to kind of discern, right? All right, someone you know in your life to help uh, accurately uh, understand who they are. Right? You guys do this as you walk into church. You guys do this as you walk into school. Every single day, you are making judgments. You are evaluating. Right? When you meet someone new, there is a thought process that is going on where I'm evaluating, is this person trustworthy? Right? Do I see myself being friends with this person? Right? And so we make judgments based on their observations, maybe you know, the, the way in which they look, maybe some of their... their, their um, things that they're interested in, and we try to make a conclusion. It's like, is that a person I want to be friends with or not, right? And sometimes there's some very unfair ways that we can do that, and we can make some harsh assumptions of other people um, in that whole process. But, But broadly speaking, Jesus isn't just talking about condemning someone in that terms of judgment. He's also just saying your everyday life is you're making an evaluation over, it could be a choice that you got to make, deciding what the best choice is. you got to judge whether or not, you know, to do this or to go to this college or go to the guy college. We make judgments every single day. And so what Jesus is sharing here is, is as you judge, judge fairly. Right? And he makes the point like, hey, you know what? Uh, it's, it's foolish for you to be the one to point out someone's uh, little speck in their eye, something they've got wrong. It's an expression. When you've got this huge block in your own eye. And so he says, hey, before you make a judgment, uh, also take time to evaluate yourself and how you are, are living this out. And, and obviously he's calling out some of them because they're being hypocritical. And so we don't want to be hypocrites, right? No one wants to be that way. And then obviously, as the story goes on, he then talks about some pigs and pearls. He talks about um, this idea of our heavenly father, which is a really unique point because he's talking about, you know, ask, seek, and knock. Um, And I was always confused, like, how that fits into, he's talking about judgment, and then he's talking about the golden rule and, like, how that fits in the middle of it, what's, like, the connection there. But I think one of the things he's doing is, say, hey, as you judge, judge fairly, but he's also calling us to rethink um, our view of how we judge and evaluate God, right? Because he makes this comparison as he's talking about, you know what, like an earthly father, right? You know, they're imperfect. They all make mistakes. They do wrong things. And yet even an earthly father uh, will provide and take care of their children because they love them. But he says, all right, even comparing that, how much more would a loving, perfect, heavenly father care for you? Right? Because sometimes in our, in our lives, sometimes we have a, an assumption, we have a view, or, or judge God in a certain way But sometimes we need to evaluate whether or not that is true. And so Jesus makes a point to say, hey, like, ask, seek not, come to the heavenly Father, and he will meet your needs and the things that you're crying out for. And then obviously he gets to the golden rule and he says, uh, do unto others as you would have them to do, which in many ways is kind of the same thing he's talking about when he talks about judgment, right? Judge fairly. If you're going to judge someone, judge yourself in the same standard as I'm judging you. So how do we do that? How do we judge fairly? Because we don't want to be be harsh. We don't want to be condemning of other people because we know how much that hurts. We want to treat other people as we want them. uh, We want other people to treat us as we treat them. So what does that look like? How do we do that? Well, tonight I want to share a bottom line to kind of get it started, and that is this. The bottom line for tonight is that when you don't want to feel or you don't want to be judging others, how do you make sure you don't become that which you despise? Well, the bottom line is this, set the standard for others 
by treating them the way you want to be treated. Set the standard for others by treating them the way you want to be treated. All right, it's a golden rule. That sounds great. We probably heard that. Maybe your parents told you that. You should do the golden rule. You should treat other people um, the way you want to be treated, which is very countercultural because in our culture, it's, hey, you hurt me, I hurt you back. But what Jesus is saying is, hey, don't react that way. It, just, it goes nowhere and just keeps getting worse. Instead, set the standard. Try a new way. Don't react Be proactive. You set the standard for how this relationship's going to go, how this friendship's going to go by the way in which you treat them. But that's easy when they're treating you nice. It's easy when they're being kind to you. But what if they're not? What if they're being judgmental to you? You got to live by this golden rule. So how do you do that? Because that's not easy. Well, number one, get in the presence of God. Number one, get in the presence of God. And I talked about this the first week, and Justin touched on it too. It's just this idea um, of the importance of this whole entire Sermon on the Mount. Some of these things are hard teachings that we can't do on our own. Right on Sunday morning, we've been talking about blessed, the Beatitudes, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, which is to say blessed are those who realize their need for God's help that I can't do these things on my own, that I, uh, I want to react, that in, that in my, my anger, I want to fight fire with fire. I need God's strength to be able to set the standard and handle it a different way. And so how do we do that? Get in the presence of Jesus? Well, it's a little bit of a misleading phrase because God is omnipresent, which is to say he is always present. He is everywhere. Uh, we have access to call out to him, to cry to him, to pray to him anytime we want. Right? Obviously, we can do it here, but we can do it anywhere we are in our everyday lives. When you're at school, um, when you're on the bus, when you're coming home, um, when you're in a, a, an argument, when you're struggling, uh, when you're at home and, and no one else is around and you're fighting temptation, the Lord is with you. He is an ever-present help in need. But the problem is we're not always aware of his presence because we're so focused on everything else. And so it's a choice for us to be intentional, to get in God's word, to pray, to be intentional about, uh, you know, there's a a verse that I love and I'm forgetting where it was, but, you know, to pray unceasingly, to always be going to God and asking him for your, for his help, right? And so uh, that may sound simplistic, right? You know, read your Bible, pray. I I hear that all the time in church. But really, if we're going to be able to live out this Christian life and set a new standard, a new way of living, we really need him every single day day. And it's not complicated. You just got to get in his presence and spend time with him. And the second thing is to evaluate the block in your own eye. Evaluate the block in your own eye. I think this is important because uh, our enemy, Satan, uh, one of his characteristics and one of the things he does is that he deceives. And he deceives us into thinking that we got it all together. That, you know what, Uh, I don't struggle that much. Uh, I don't at least... I don't struggle as bad as that person. You know, I'm not doing the things that that person is doing. And we, we deceive ourselves into thinking we're okay, that we've got it on our own, um, that we're, our righteousness is up here and other people are down there because we don't struggle with those things that those people struggle with. So I'm in this better place. That's self-righteousness and not righteousness built on Christ alone. And it's such an easy place for us to get into if we're not careful. And so Jesus is saying, hey, before you look at someone else and what they're doing wrong, take time to evaluate, to judge fairly, to look at yourself as well, right? And he uses like maybe little splinters in their eye, but you've got this huge uh, block in your eye. And so often for us, that is pride. It's a false image that we have it all together on our own. And so we need to take time. Jesus confronted the self-righteousness that so often we can easily fall into Right, and the beatitude we talked about this morning is blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. And if you were with us this morning, I encourage you guys to come out Sunday mornings if you haven't because we're going through some great stuff. But this morning was so important for us as we talked about as we mourn, as we grieve over the things and lament to to mourn like what we're struggling with, our sin or or the things going on in our lives and, and we're honest about those things and we don't just try to hide it in the darkness, we bring it to light. We go to people that can help us with those things and, and we share those emotions instead of just, you know, hiding it away or self medicating and, and other things. We're honest and we bring what's in the dark to light. 
And as you do that, one of the most powerful things happens that Jesus promises us that we will be comforted. That you will be comforted as you bring your baggage, as you bring your hurt, as you bring your sin to the light. That God will be the one that wraps his arms around and comforts and he will put people in your life, Christian believers. That's what's so great about Christian community when it's done rightly is that we can surround one another in love. Because each one of us has things that we're struggling with. And if we just keep it to ourselves, we're really limiting our ability to overcome those things. But when we're honest and real with each other, something really powerful can happen. So we can find strength in our weaknesses. And the third thing is this, treat others not the way they treat you, but by the way Christ treats you. Treat others not the way they treat you, but by the way Christ treats you. Uh, John 3.16 is a famous passage. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, um, only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It's an amazing verse, but I think some people like, we don't like, we just kind of read that one verse, but there's a lot of other great verses after it. Like the very next verse, 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. I want you to hear this, right? When we talk about God and his, his view of you and his approach and what he's been after, right? Since the beginning of time, he didn't come to condemn the world, but to save it. Right? Instead of saying, hey, you sinned, so um, it's over, I'm done with you. All right? He could have just said, I, an eye for an eye. But what he says is, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice myself. Instead of you having to give your eye, I'm going to give mine. I'm going to give up myself for you so that you could be forgiven and in a relationship with him. Right? That's an amazing thing that as we come to him in faith, believing in what he's done for us, right, and saying, God, I want to turn away from these old things and turn to you and believe in what you've done, that he will forgive us, that we can be reborn or we can be a, a masterpiece, we can be forgiven, we can become a new creation in Christ when we choose to follow him. And we find and experience that grace, that mercy that he gives us, it also empowers us to extend it to others, right? As we talk about judging other people, if we're being honest and saying, hey, we're messed up too, we struggle, we're evaluating the areas in our lives, and if we're embracing God's grace, there's an opportunity to extend it to others. If Jesus didn't come to condemn, I don't need to condemn as well, or either. If Jesus came to save, he came and showed compassion. And so as other people are struggling and with their sin and different things in their lives, we can meet them with compassion with the same way in which Jesus meets us. We can forgive those who trespass against us because of what he has done for us and forgiven us of our trespasses. Right? Because of Jesus and what he's done for us on a Christ, uh, we have a new standard that we can live by. We can treat others not by the way they treat us because they may treat us poorly. And it's so easy to react to that, but instead we can set the standard that Christ set for us by loving those who persecute you, by showing kindness and mercy to those who are struggling, to show them a better way. See, when we treat others the way Christ treats us, we show people something that they've never seen before, and that there's a a way out of this cycle of brokenness and dysfunction, that there's hope, that there's healing, that there's forgiveness, and there's a new life. Imagine if we actually did that. Imagine if we actually lived out the golden rule in our everyday lives. Imagine what our lives and our world and our community could look like if we actually lived this out. We can do this through Christ who strengthens us. Let's pray. God, thank you so much that you set a high standard through what you did, your sacrificial love on a cross for us. And through that, we can build upon a firm foundation where we can love others and care for others and show people compassion instead of condemnation. That we can love others, that we can help each other, and that as we uh, evaluate and work through the, uh, the, the blocks in our own eyes, that we can also, yes, help other people with the blocks in their eyes because we truly care about them. 
God, I pray that you would surround each student here, and myself included, people that are honest with us to help us with the blocks in our eyes. Maybe we don't even realize uh, the block in our eye, but someone might be able to show that to us who genuinely cares about what's best for us. God, may we show humility and not self-righteousness in those moments. And God, I thank you that you are a God that as we are uh, mourning, as we are poor in spirit, God, that you promise that you will help us, that you will comfort us and make us new. So God, we want to believe these promises of what your scripture teaches, that we can be and set an example for the world, that we can be a light to those who are in some dark, hurting places. So God, help us set the standard by treating others not the way that they treat us, but by the way you treat us. We love you, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Ooh, that was a good word. I, uh, I appreciate that challenge to try and treat other people the way that we want to be treated. And I was just thinking back to what we talked about last week, too, about not showing retaliation towards others and, you know, kind of managing anger in that way. And the final, final thought that I want to leave you guys with, if I can just have your attention for 30 seconds, the final thought that I want to leave you with is just reiterating what Jason said in point number one there, that these things are hard and they're not possible unless we are connected to Jesus Christ and unless we're growing in our faith. And I had a professor who said something to me this week that really kind of clicked um, just to kind of think about spiritual disciplines. He said, spiritual disciplines like Bible reading or prayer, those things are the soil where God does the growing. And that really just made sense in my, my mind this week. The spiritual disciplines are the soil where God does the growing. So keeping in with that theme and, and thinking about getting in the presence of God this week, my final encouragement for you guys tonight would be take the, the reading of the word serious this week. Spend time intentionally in prayer for your, yourself to grow in these things and, and ask God to help you treat others the way that you would want them to treat you. So that's our final encouragement for tonight. Two things I want to remind you of super quick. I uh, want to talk about the Prayer Care Share Cross. We are still working towards our goal of having 200 gospel conversations this school year. The cross is getting pretty full. Uh, so I would encourage you guys, before you leave tonight, stop by the cross. Think about someone that you can be praying for, or you can be caring for, or sharing the gospel that, with this week. So stop by the cross and, and take a look at that. And then the other thing I want to mention is that we do have a prayer box by our table in the back. If there's something that you just need prayer for tonight, um, whether it's for yourself or someone else, you can stop by, you know, write a prayer request on that card and just leave it in the box. And our, our student leaders here at Highlight will be praying for that throughout the week. So consider doing that as well as you leave tonight. But other than that, that's all I have for you guys. We look forward to seeing you next week at Highlight where we are continuing Firm Foundation and we'll have more Team Challenge games for you. So we'll see you next week for Student Connect Groups at 9 a.m. and Highlight at 6.30.